What is up, everybody? Hey, uh, give us just one second. Eric and I are gonna uh, make a drink and be right back. Y'all stand by. What is up, everybody? Man, this is uh, this has been a crazy day, a good day, a Monday, but uh, any day we're hanging out talking about rock pounds and stuff is uh, is a blessing, right? What is up, y'all? Happy Monday! Who we got in here? Sean Keller, Harold Thomas, Curtis Hazard. What's up, man? Danny Furness, always watching with us. Miss Giles, Shelby St. Clair in the house, Scott Paulson, Jay Cox, Zach Kilgore, Mr. Charles Chris, High Octane Films in the house, Rob Wyman, Jay Stortz watching with us, Forrest, man, good all y'all, appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight, this is great, hey, um, just want to make some quick notes here uh make sure we're thanking the right people team Ot six you see behind me there a uh, huge sponsor of the show as well as the uh little logos you see scrolling down there in the corner uh high octane films black dog photography d pats photography uh without these guys we wouldn't have beautiful pictures to look at we wouldn't have coverage of the races coverage of the stuff that we love so uh huge Shout out to those guys. Huge thank you for those sponsors. Um, we got a ton of stuff that we're going to go over here at the end of the show. I'm going to make you wait. But uh, the only reason why is because I want to get my boy Eric up on the screen here. Because, dude, what is up, man? Bounce him if you got him. Oh, I got to move hey, my... Hey, I really appreciate you joining us today, Eric. Um you are a busy man. 
Yeah, I'm. Uh, well, no, I'm not that busy. I try to. I try to act busy, but I'm not really all that busy. Hey, that's there's no uh, wrong. Can with you that. hear me fine? Because I didn't know. I didn't know the rules of engagement. I didn't. I didn't realize nope. that like I had to have technology and. Stuff. Oh no 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 no. What do I do with these? Yeah, just just let them float, I man. Just let them float. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, so somebody asked me. Uh, somebody asked me earlier what. Say it again. Did I look up at the camera? Or I look, at you down here? <laughs> look at you. Look at whatever you want to look at, man. There's there's no rules to this stuff. You are good. You are good. Hey, um, somebody asked me earlier. You know who who is Eric Hagen? What what is uh, what does he do? And I I said, well, um, he does a little bit of everything, but it is um, always in support. Uh, of rock bouncing. Yeah. And um, so if you don't mind, Eric, can you give us a quick history lesson on, you know, where you got started in, in off-roading and in rock bouncing? Okay. Yeah, we don't really have, we don't have that kind of time. You said we only had an hour. <laughs> yeah. It would take us an hour to actually drive to the park and... Um, Actually, it was, and you know, it takes a lot longer than an hour to drive to a park. It takes like anywhere from seven to ten hours to drive to a park. Right, or a couple of um, days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I I have always been an outdoors person. Period. And I I grew up. I'm the youngest of five, so my older brother had a PJ seven in the early '80s. I'm old. Uh, I won't tell you how old I am, but I'm over forty. He had a CJ7, he's had a Willys Jeep, he had them all. We would take them and get them stuck in the mud, just like everybody. Um, and uh, I just grew up outside. And I, I grew up either on a mountain bike or on in a truck. And uh, I have, uh, it, that's just evolved. And I was around the scene when everybody started rock bouncing, um, when the whole coin of the when the whole term was coined online uh i'm uh i'm in tech by by trade so uh i was uh I, I participated in all the email forums and all the email lists before there were actually forums and then clearly there's forums there's you know uh pirate four by four there's hardline crawlers there's uh if, if you're into toyotas you know about i hate mud you know about all these forums that everybody kind of congregated and actually became unified online. And then clearly the new social media comes along, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, go delete TikTok. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, so I've always been around. I've always actually ironically had Toyotas and I have probably tried to make Toyotas go as far as any Toyota could possibly go, but we all know that that ain't going to uh, it ain't going to survive in the rock bouncing world. So I used to get made fun of, and um, but uh, no, that's that's kind of a, a brief history of me. A lot of people, if you're old school, a lot of people may know me from this thing behind me, um, signs. Uh, it was, it really started before the, the racing started. It was really just a, um, bounce them if you got them. And it, it, a lot of people are like, man, you're such a heckler. But I was like, I, I kind of consider it, it just encouragement. Yeah, that's you not try, heckling at all. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, and like some of them might be heckling, you know, I got this one. And when, when you're when you're pushing 700 horsepower on the side of the hill, you can't hear what those people are saying, but you can see this. Yeah. 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 So, and I got you know. Yes, that was that was on the cover for the show today. Show us your yeah. Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah. How, how is that heckling? That's not heckling. No, it's not. Now, well, it depends on. Are, are we talking about male drivers or female drivers? Because uh, you know, at, at one time we did have. We had female drivers, yeah. and we uh, yeah. I, anyway, I got I got a whole bunch of them. I, I'll I'll be pulling them out as you're talking and we're talking. Yep. I'll just be showing them 
to people. Perfect. Because I, there's one that I really, speaking of female drivers, uh, she doesn't even drive anymore, but I have a, an old sign for her as well. So um, I think as far as the old drivers go, I probably had a sign for you. Um, and if I didn't have a sign for you, I probably had a shirt for you. Uh, there's a go, go forth stickies. And this is a custom shirt, uh, for Scott where he had the go forth, but then I had to go ahead and put, uh, I custom, yep. custom, stickies at, custom Sharpie st uh, yeah, stickies. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my favorite Sharpie. is yeah. the zero, the zero one. No, oh, the hero oh, one. Right. No, I'm with hero, right, or something? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. Two okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, one shirt actually has an arrow saying, I'm with hero. Yes, yes. If, if you're if you're walking with one of Mad Ram's shirts, I can be walking right beside them, and he says hero, and I, yeah, I, I'm not a hero. <laughs> you're I'm a hero. So that's one of my other shirts that just says, uh, you know, uh, zero, but some people here because that's what I'll do. I'll put it on the sideline. And then the most recent that everybody uh, sees on social media is the yellow vest. We got to wear our yellow vest, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you're your media or if you're safety guy or whatever, you're out on the hill, you got to have a, you got to have a vest on and, and yours is labeled. Um, fake news. Fake news. There's a lot of media, fake media. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of media up there on the hill, yeah. but then there's fake media on the hill. Yeah. Uh, so, but I just want to be seen. I want to be, I, I don't want them to run over me. Exactly. I don't, I don't want to look like another rock on the side of the trail. That's so. right. Yeah. Um, bright yellow, bright yellow fake media vest. Hey, yeah. uh, you speaking of recent races and stuff, you've been on the microphone a lot. I, I I want to, is that something that you have, like started out in early on or? No, um, I have been on the microphone at the majority of uh, the race venues. Uh, and it's really just because for one reason or another, they wanted to uh, take a break and they knew that I was loud and they knew that I guess I wasn't afraid to, uh, to talk to uh, a brick wall or a rock wall. So just like, hey, we need you as a filler. So, um, I, I think, I think Clyde was the first person to do it. Um, he was just like, here's a mic, go talk. Yep. Uh, and, uh, he's always been a really good friend. Uh, all, all the, all the race promoters have been just great friends of mine. So, um, I don't know. I just talk, man. It, I, it, that's what it really makes a huge difference, man. And, and, uh, I'm a firm believer that this, this motorsport has its characters, you know, they yeah. are, they are unlike anybody uh, that I've ever, you know, I, I've been into some stuff yeah. throughout my life. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I'll be, I'll be 40 this year as well, you know? So I, Man. I've been some, I've been through some stuff and, uh, I tell you, it's how, how old is your beard going to be? Yeah. Uh, of like three. Three. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I, you, I didn't know if your beard was 42. No. You were going to be 40. No. <laughs> no. No. So you came. I, I stopped my, shaving when I got out the Army, January 2018. I ain't got, I don't, yeah, that's, that's a good beard. Because yeah. I, I can't do that. Yeah. But. No more shaving yeah, for me. <laughs> you've been through a lot of medical stuff like me. I have, and I, and I wanted to get to that too. Um, yeah. You know, HEPA, HEPA rules and stuff. I, I didn't want to go too deep into it. But, yeah. um. You know, you are uh, an amazing person in uh, more ways than just the character you play at Rock Bouncer Races, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I got bronchitis. My head's in the way of that one. But you see that? Yeah. But um, there it is. There it is. Perfect. Um, Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nope. I got bronchitis. Nope. So you want to you want to get into that or at all or I mean we that could be that could be a show uh, all on itself. Time. Man, I have had it all, dude. I mean, you know, it's a thousand foot view. I got hit by a car when I was seven. Uh, I was crossing the street, hit by a car. They thought I was bleeding internally. My mom looked at me in the ER and was like, "Oh, he uh he had a tooth here before he got hit." So, um, and that started. I mean, everything, dude. I've had tumor on my pituitary gland. I've uh, had uh, bacterial meningitis twice. 
I've had leaky cerebral spinal fluid a few times. So uh, they put a shunt in my head, which there's a knot on my head right there. If you can kind of see it, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, that's like a blow off valve for my cerebral spinal fluid in my brain. It goes down to my abdomen. It's all internal. <clears throat> um, so a few times that's actually been infected. Um, I've had a few you know, near death experiences and it's not like a track. It's not like it was an automobile accident. So it was like, Ooh, you almost died. It was a, I'm sitting in the ICU for weeks and sometimes months and there's no hope. Uh, it was uh, a little bit, and I was coherent the whole time. So, um, and then recently I've had uh, throat cancer. So, it was HPV throat cancer. I don't know the age demographic here, but it is, uh, if you have children, you know all about human papillomavirus because they've been begging you to vaccinate your children. Yep. And uh, I don't have kids, so I had no clue what it was until I had a tickle in my throat. So now, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with that. Uh, I'll deal with it for the rest of my life because um, once they radiate your throat, your throat does so much stuff. So uh, hmm. it is what it is, man. But I tell you what, I would, I, what I am is I'm glad to be here to complain about it. So I'm blessed that I'm actually even alive. And I love that aspect of life in general. That's right, man. That's right. Uh, oh. I, I think that's why we clicked so well yeah. uh, initially because, uh, and no one knows this. In fact, Eric was probably the, sixth person in my entire life almost 40 years old that i've ever told this story to uh i was born you, i'm sorry no go ahead i, I was born with a, an immune deficiency uh i was at at six months old i was told uh, i was diagnosed with wiscut aldrich syndrome uh at the time there were 12 kids on record in the world that had it five of them were in the U S two of them was me and my brother. Yeah. So the, uh, age expectancy for whisk full blown whisk Aldrich syndrome is a year old. So at six months old, my doctor told my mom, you know, you, you got about another six months to go. Well, at a year old, I was still kicking. And then they my said, age. well, I, I don't, we don't expect him to live past 10, 10 or 12. Well, at, 10 years old, I was still kicking. Um, at the age of 15 years old, a doctor who had been studying my blood for a good decade uh, said, yeah. we want to take out your, we want to remove your spleen. And we think that that's going to be the problem. The, the bottom line is, is your spleen, which you don't need to live. Your spleen is like a uh, a sponge, if you will. And it siphons out, it, it cleans out your blood and stuff. Uh, junk out of your blood. Well, my spleen was seeing my white T cells and thinking that they were wrong. There was something wrong with the genetic code or whatever it was. And they were eating my white T, uh, my spleen was, was eating my white T cells thinking that they were bad, but they weren't bad. Yeah. So they removed my spleen. Uh, true story. When they got in there, I had another baby spleen growing behind it. So I, so I had, yeah, so I had some alien stuff growing inside me, There's right? There's a movie about you. It was like the dark half or something. Like <laughs> yes, it's, it's a Stephen King dark. movie. Yes, good call. Yeah. I read that book when I was a kid, yeah. Um, well, it was about you, apparently. Yeah. Stephen King didn't know it. Yeah, apparently so. But, uh, yeah, I took my spleen out, man, and I tell you, I, I, I went from, you know, uh, 8,000, 5,000, 8,000 T-cell count um, you know, if, if you've had cancer, man, you know what that T cell counts about, uh, yeah. to, to upwards of normal levels, upwards of, you know, 200,000, 250,000 range. So, um, again, you want, you know, you want to talk about blessings and living life. I, I, when I was on the operating table at 15 years old, I said to myself, if this works, I'm, yeah. I'm going to live every, every day. Like it's my last and I have, I've stayed true to that. You know, oh yeah. So, so I mean, you got you got to prepare for tomorrow, but live like you're not going to get there. Yep. Live for today. That's right. That's I right. mean, I had to, I had to prepare for this video that we're on right now, but I I was literally at the park 
helping build a track for uh, mountain bikes and and track bikes, literally up until the point where I logged on here. So. Yep, that's awesome. That's Man, awesome. That is, you have a you have a great story to tell, and uh, I know there's a lot of people who probably want to hear it, and just your positivity, the way that you live life, and go out there and just push forward every single day. That's that's what we can do. We're like ambassadors of living life. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Um, it took me a while to embrace that. Um, I really, it was, it's been tough and it still is. It's, uh, you know, a lot of people are always ask me about, or they'll tell me that a post that I posted on Facebook has really inspired them and, and just with my joyful, upbeat uh, post. And it was like, you know, I'm glad that you saw it that way, but man, these are for me. You know, if, if you can get something out of my post, then that's just gravy on the top because a lot of these posts are literally just to keep me going. Yeah. And I seek those kind of posts out. Like I seek positive posts out because there's enough negativity in the world where I'm just going to try to find jokes yep. and just that can bring me up yep. That's right. from a, from a rough conversation or a rough work day or just anything that's rough pain. You know, I've got back pain. I've got head pain. I've got all kinds of leg pain. I've got all kinds of pains, but you know, these days doctors don't want to give you anything because they don't want to get you addicted to them. So it's like, now what do I do? That's right. I'll just, I'll just keep on going until I can't go anymore and then I'll rest and just try to get up and keep going after I rest. That's right. That's all we can. That's right. I, I think idle hands play a big role in people that, that deal with pain and, and stuff like that. I think that's right. I think that's and key. Row tide. Uh, if you, if you did. Yeah. I'm from Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alabama. So, uh, so you're not for Georgia then. Not well. I'll pull for Georgia. I'll pull for Georgia if they're winning, because I've always said so. I, I went to Auburn University, but there's one thing in life I I like winners, so I I will pull for the winners, uh, and uh, so I'll pull for Auburn. But I have I got to pull for Alabama. If you're from Alabama, it's kind of like a if a, it's a state mating call, if you will, to yell roll tide. I mean that's how roll tide. That's that's what you got to yell. Uh, I was stationed on Fort Benning, right there on the Alabama Georgia border, and oh, it, it could oh, have yeah. it could have been it could have gone either way. Whoever you ran into, they were yeah. either a Georgia fan or you know whatever, Alabama, well, Al- Alabama or, or Auburn. Yeah, yeah. Well, Auburn. People say that Auburn's in Georgia because they're like clearly they they call it West Georgia College. Uh, Auburn is, it might as well be UCLA, unknown college of lower Alabama. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's true. It, it's, uh, the only people who really cheer for Auburn are people who went to Auburn, because if you didn't go to Auburn, then by default, you're an Alabama fan. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it was. Yeah. Uh, and you go down to Florida, at least in the top part of Florida, you, they don't sell Florida State or University of Florida gear. They sell Alabama gear. You go to Tennessee, they might you might see a little a, a little bit of faded orange, but you're going to see Alabama gear. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was up in Kentucky. I was like, why is there an Alabama shirt in the Walmarts in Kentucky? <laughs> By the way, Walmart is is you say it with it an S. Pl- well, there's several Walmarts. Yes, there are. There are. So well, that, yeah, it, you're going to the Walmarts. Right. Like and right. In, in, in Alabama, you don't even have to actually. Uh, you don't have to announce that's where you're going, but that's where you, when you're leaving the house in the evening, yeah. you announce that you're going to the Walmarts, but you don't really have to because everybody assumes that's where you're headed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because where else would you be going? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, you're not going to the mall. <laughs> I, I, I've seen you out trail riding before saying that you were looking for the Walmarts. I was. I was. <laughs> I, I believe it. I, I think you saw that on one of Cole and Matt's videos. It, um, I mean, yeah. There was a guy behind me, um, Timmy, somebody. He was back about two buggies back, but I was actually looking. I was actually looking for something to eat, so I was looking for the WalMarts, and I, then I was looking for the Bohangles. 
Uh, yeah. has very good uh, uh, biscuits. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, what's the other one? Yeah. I, uh, there's another one that I can't remember what it is. Another fast food restaurant that I always used to, that one of my friends always used to uh, mispronounce. Wu Pao. Yep. I saw that Can one earlier today. Wu Pao. Wu Pao. That's, that's right. what, um, that's what the motors thing is uh, a little bit of Wu Pao. Yep. Uh, I, there's not too many people. I mean, there, there's a lot of disagreement in the world right now, you know, regardless of what, what, uh, well, actually I can't say that uh, there are, there might be some political parties that don't like the Wu Pao. Uh, and I don't know how electric motors can make the Wu Pao sound. Yes, uh, this is true. I don't, I don't think electric motors can backfire either though. So <laughs> I don't even know how that would work. But, uh, everybody likes Wu Who don't like Wu Pao? No, no, absolutely. Right. Uh, I, I'm pretty right. sure that Jonathan Wright is watching and uh, he knows that I, I like to call it uh, rumpity rump. Yeah, a little rumpity rump. Skinny pedal, that's right. Yeah, that, yeah. There's some, uh, there's some of the OGs um, like, you know, Bobby Cannon, he, he's uh, obviously, he's the godfather of doubt. Um, if you ever get an opportunity to look in Screaming Blue, it actually has two skinny pedals. I don't even think the thing has brakes. Um, actually, there's an on-off switch. It's just <laughs> on, on, yeah. off, he's out signing autographs, hugging babies, yeah. you know. Yep. That's, but there, there are people. I mean, there are there. There's buggies that have two skinny pedals with no brakes, and that's definitely one of them. Who? Uh, um, what? Um, what was it like back in the day, man? Before it was the National Rock Racing Association, or even the Southern Rock Racing Association, where y'all were just yeah. out trail riding in some bad machines. What was it like that first real bouncer that you saw that was sexy with a op with open headers and all that? You know what I mean? What was uh, that? Well, I know that like we were, I had been seeing them for years and we were at Chocolaco, uh for like a Toyota event where, you know, we had our old Toyota trucks that went rolling down the road used to, and you would take the bed off and put it on 37s or, you know, at the time they even had the, the, the sticky 37s. But, um, you know, we, we, we crawl up on the RTI ramp and do all that fun stuff. Well, we were actually at a Toyota event at Chocolaco back in the, oh man, it, it had been over 12, 13 years ago. Um, it, and then up comes like a dozen Cold Works buggies. I mean, it was all of them. Uh, I think that there were some of them in that group that weren't even Cold Works buggies, but they were all there. Uh, all the, you know, all the classic names. And um, uh, I think they left, I mean, they, they were killing all the hills. Just, just all there were there were hills with, with daggers and just blood all over them because they were all dead. They were they had done been killed, but I think they were getting a little upset at some of us because some of us were actually also going up boat ramp with our sticky tires, in our, you know, in our fifteen hundred dollar, uh, Toyotas and Land Cruisers and junk. And, but uh, it would have been, man, and you know, Gray Rock had buggies that just were you know. It looked like somebody had taken a front porch and put boggers on it. I mean, some of the some of the buggies had front porch swings to sit in. Uh, <laughs> it, it had like deep freeze ice coolers on the back, uh, corrugated roofs, uh, you know, wood shingles. Um, they weren't. I mean, it looked like somebody had taken a shack and put. 14 bolts under it and just like we're gonna we're gonna go up cable hill on this thing <laughs> uh, but i tell you what there's one guy who we don't get to see race that much and that's uh mr travis love it and this is his old sign we love it um i saw him for the first time in south carolina um at uh golly what is that place called i forget what it's called but um i mean there's so many parks that we don't go to anymore um uh, yeah, it's the Razor crowd. The uh, the the Razors are fun, but they're like gnats. We'd swipe them away in the beginning, and now you can't even swipe them away. They're so thick. Mm -hmm. So it, it used to be buggies. Yeah. So, uh, 
Somebody in the somebody in the um in the comments could probably tell me what uh what park that is out over there in, in South Carolina that I'm drawing a blank Zach, on. Zach Kilgore is in the Carolinas. You know what uh, which one he's talking about? What, what area is it in? South, North, East, West? South remember? Carolina. In one of the Carolinas, it's in the South one. I don't know. <laughs> Not North, but South yeah. Carolina. Okay, for sure. Gulches. I just called it. I just remembered it. Gulches Off Road Park. Gulches. Uh, yeah. Um, man, there's some, there's some, all, uh, Gulches is an awesome park to yeah, go to. You just come uh, up with it. Yeah. All it, all it takes, all it takes is a little bit of sprinkly and those clay hills are just cannot be conquered. Mm. And, uh, I tell you what, man, I have broken a thing or two at Gulches. I have actually driven my truck to seven hours to Gulches only to break it. I have to come back home through that place that we call Atlanta. Yeah. And I, uh, I ain't never lost anything in Atlanta. Nothing. I don't like to go through it, but we had to take a trailer back and get my junk back out. So, uh, wow. Yeah, man. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's a famous guy named Ricky Barry that used to have an event and he still has it, but he used to have it at Morris mountain. And, to to show you how far this has come, it would be like a thousand dollars for the fastest up the hills. Like a thousand dollars, really? A thousand dollars? Yeah. Uh, that's I don't know, man. It's hard to even believe that that's been over a decade and the, the buggies have come that far. Because, uh, man, I I think any any buggy that races in any series right now could have dominated any of the best buggies from a decade ago. That's how far we've come. For sure. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Zach's saying he broke a bunch of Rockwells in the 70s over there. Uh, yeah. He probably, he probably broke it at Gulch. In fact, it might be at, still at the bottom of some of the uh, some of those wheels. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Broken yeah. many Rockwells in the 70s with many empty wallets in my past. Maybe at Gulch's, yeah. He's he's doing the uh, Zach's doing the uh, RC thing now. Oh man! Yeah, what do you what do you think about that? You you uh, ventured into the RC game for a little bit there. Man, I tried. It, it's tough. I mean, I have been in and out of it uh, a few times, and uh, I should have learned my lesson the first time that I'm a consumer. I'm not a builder. I, I like to buy things and then I just like to break them. That's all I do and just point and say, Ooh, you fix it. <laughs> I had so many RC parts strewn all over the house. Um, I can take, I can take some things apart. I just can't put them back together, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, anybody who does the RC thing, y'all have my respect because I can't do it. Yep. I can't do it. Uh, it's tough. I love it. And I, I've had, um, man, I've had some custom ones, and yep. I have you know, lots, lots and lots of doll hairs go in them. Uh, I, at one point, I had an RC that cost more than my rock crawler, so <laughs> it was um, little evil. Was it little evil? Well, little evil was up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah little evil. Yeah, it, it, that one was up there. Yep. I, I recouped about half my money on that one when I sold it uh, to. Uh, to whoever I sold it to, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yep, yeah, I remember Little Evil. That was uh, blue, that was uh, Blue Holler, right? Yeah, down in Blue Holler. Where... Oh yeah, I destroyed yep. it at Blue Holler. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. that was a good time. Oh man. Yep. Uh, I got... Eric, Go ahead. Eric, Eric also MCs uh, for a lot of the RC races too, so we we definitely appreciate that. While everybody's getting their lunch break, uh, Eric's over there. Uh, racing with us so we appreciate yeah. that hook dirt and we're, we're slinging uh mini hook dirt yep at, uh, at the rc uh those things get rowdy they a do. lot rowdy um uh, i'm you would almost wonder if the big buggies could go rc like can you control one of the big buggies on the side of a hill uh and would they make it because i think that's one of the reasons why these rcs get so rowdy is that what are the uh what are the human repercussions of yep. them who cares no exactly I'm, I'm, if you know if if parts ain't flying you ain't trying that's right that's right that's right 
you know, Rex no. like Daniel Heckley's. I don't, you weren't, uh, were, were you at, uh, no, uh, you no. missed Bikini Bottoms, yeah, but Rex like Daniel Heckley's, man, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, when you're not at an event, and when you immediately, when you see one person saying prayers to so and so, you almost, even, I've, been, I've been around this sport long enough to know, and this, you know, long before racing, you even when you knew that there was an event at Gray Rock or, or you know, up at Teleco or something, uh, if you saw social media blowing up with a name, you knew something was going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if even if they hadn't even started saying a name yet, they'd be like, prayers to my off road family. And you're just like, everyone, everyone listening right there knows what I'm talking about because we've seen it and you have felt it and you, the hairs on your, the back of your neck stand up because you immediately start messaging people like, yeah, what who, yeah. Who was it? It's somebody I know. And like, you know, I've got friends up there right now. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. When Dan, it was the same thing the other week when Daniel wrecked and, and, I instantly was like, oh, man, I got to find out how he's doing. And so you instantly go to his page, his wife's page, and it's just like, uh, check back. Uh, I, want, I want to, you know, give it, keep us updated minute by minute, whatever. And then with Corona, you know, they're not letting them in the hospital. You know, they're not letting guests in the hospital, so they have to sit out in the car and wait. It's like, man, I can imagine I, that's uh, – his whole family probably just going crazy out there yeah 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 because they wouldn't let her they wouldn't let her in no they wouldn't let her in the hospital <laughs> you know, it, it was bad enough yeah. they flew him to uh they flew him an hour and a half two hours to yeah. uh memphis no or yeah memphis yeah yeah memphis and uh yeah and so that she, so she had to drive i i was talking to w- one of the uh uh not the not maybe the co-pilot but i was talking to somebody from the aircraft saying where are we going to put the wife and they're like not going to happen there's just enough just enough room for the staff and she, so so i immediately yeah. i immediately google mapped where the hospital was dale yeah would love to see that guy back huh i would love to see him back yep uh uh, he he was talk about a crowd favorite. Talk about rolling down the hill. Uh, we were at Chocolato, uh for a race, and there was a bonus line, and he went up. He, he may have been the first one to attempt it, but he he got to the top and went T over tea kettle backwards, and landed on all fours, and without even skipping a beat, kept going. How do you do that, and, Eric? How do you do that, man? It was a God. God. I mean, when he's, I mean, his hands might have not been together, but he was praying while he was holding the steering wheel. So, uh, you know, how did Moses part the waters? I don't know. But Dude. Dale, Dale, yeah, hit it, flipped backwards. He put his thing down, flipped it, and reversed it, and gassed it right back up. And I, I don't know that I've ever heard a crowd go nuts as long as that crowd went nuts uh you you'll have to go back and watch the videos uh the replays of it it was the sickest thing i i I mean i'm sure i've seen sicker things but you know for it to be such a kind of a grassroots back then oh and by the way he was a land cruiser so you know shout out to the even though nothing was really a land cruiser on it but uh, (laughs) yeah i know i mean i'm ready to see bill larson back and i uh he got himself a buggy now. He's got himself a... Well, and, and while we're talking about old has-beens, uh, we got <laughs> uh, O-Face. Show me your O-Face. Yep. Uh, with uh, He had a buggy called Oversized. Yep. And this was his bu- this was his sign for O-Face. Uh, every time Oversized hit the line, you knew that um, it was about to be a show. He had something on his skid plate that said, Yeehaw. Yep. So he he loved to show it. Yep. <laughs> and so yep. he wasn't if he wasn't gonna roll, he'd always try to like make it roll so that he could show his knee haul. And that was a big buggy too. That was a that was a hard oh, roll. Oh, that was yeah. a hard roll buggy, man. <laughs> oh, and, and John had a big old buggy too. <clears throat> uh, it, uh, we need to see them boys out again. Yep. Just uh, you know. Uh, 
He's actually Luke's actually got a buggy out in the wet, the northwest going on now. The with uh, uh, attitude. Maddie, Maddie Moon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you know, and you know, talk about new drivers, and I know she ain't new to the West Coast out there, but I don't know why we can't get her in one of these Southern events. Yeah. Hey. Um, Absolutely. Um, it, that would be cool. Showstopper is Showstopper Two is out there too. No, is so, it really? no, the original Showstopper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. the original yeah. Showstopper. Showstopper 2 is with Jay Stortz. But, yeah, uh, the original Showstopper is out there, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got Son of a Bouncer. Son of a Bouncer. This would be Jordan Tanner yep. and, and Ethan Tanner. Man. Uh, that they used to race. Yeah. They used to have some uh, uh, Jimmy Smith buggies, the Cole Works buggies. Yep. Uh, and talk about just works of art. All of those buggies that they want the works of art. Yep. It was uh, what an era that was, huh? T- 2011, 2012, 2013 ish. Yeah, cutting your teeth. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was uh, it was funny because the races were more of a party. Uh, yeah. And I mean, it was kind of like, hey, we're gonna go to this bonfire. Oh, by the way, look over there. There's a there's a race going on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, are we going to go over there and watch the race, or are we just going to sit here at the bonfire and keep trail riding and, and keep circling back to camp? Yep. I mean, that's kind of how it was there. Yep. That's, uh, you know, and the, and the funny thing is, it's like, there's still trail rides going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, my buddies still go out and trail ride. I Believe it or not, I have friends that have no clue what rock bouncing still is. They're still out rock crawling and trying to go slow over the rocks but yeah it it really it goes back to that one sign the whoop and um the whoop brings everybody to the yard <laughs> girls and boys that's right that's right um, girls to the yard brings all the boys to the yard. Better, better than a milkshake yeah that's i right. tell you who else brings everybody to the hill and uh yes sir oh i can't I, wait to see him I, back man wow oh. I want to see him oh, back, man. One of the probably one of the rowdiest drivers and most unpredictable. As soon as he steps behind <clears> that <throat> pedal, yep. you're going to see a show. Yep. And uh, he's going to get to the top. Yeah. Uh, he might go back to the bottom and get to the top again before he gets to the finish line. Yep. But he's going to be there. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. It's such a great show. Man. Yep. I was uh I really want to see that I really want to see Plowboy three in action. Oh, uh, I mean I'll I'll see one, two, or three, all of oh, them. Oh, all of them, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, all of them, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, is he coming back soon? Do you know? I haven't heard, man. Master Motor, that's right. Through Jonathan Andrews, he uh he he's he's a local friend too. He's from Alabama, Bama. Uh. So we always, I always got to represent Alabama. The Master Motor know. Crew, they, they're always out they're there. Right now, they're crew, man. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm uh, I'm just gonna keep cycling through these Do as it. I'm grabbing. No, because uh, oh, we already talked about Bobby Tanner. Yeah. Oh, How can we uh, not talk about? Screaming is blue. That's right. But he is. He's the um, I, you know, I I I started calling him the the Godfather of Bounce. And and he really is. Uh, yeah. It's great to see someone uh, really just talk about God the way he talks about God and and his convictions and his his faith and always puts that first and on the forefront. It's beautiful. I yeah. love it. Fi- uh, finals this year or last year, his speech yeah. at finals was probably uh, probably in all of sports. Period. All of sports, motorsports, regular yeah. sports, doesn't matter. It's probably the most amped up I've been in a long time. And while we're talking about the Tanners, yep, uh, we have this one was the female Tanner, Shelby yep, Tanner. This Ms. Shelby. One, this was her poster. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> yep. And funny is that she ain't even coming anymore, so it's almost. Uh, I know. No. I know. But, yeah, I mean, we, at one point I think we had four women drivers. 
in racing in general. I don't know if they were all on the same series, but in fact, we might have even had five at one point in all the series combined. Yep. Uh, so, women, I'm speaking to you, not yep. not trying to get into them DMs. I'm trying to get you into them races. That's right. Dim races. Miss Sarah, Miss Sarah Sorensen, watching us right now. You are so fun, Eric. Love the signs. She's all one right. of them right there. She's got a buggy. She can drive. I'm saying, Sarah. That's hey, right. Sarah, hey, get in Cutter's uh, wagon and just put and just put it up the hill. Yep. Get it. Get your husband to pull the <laughs> the rain of fire up the hill. That's right. That's right. Hashtag radio flyer. Hashtag. <laughs> You know, I didn't know what hashtag meant and for, for like until like two years ago. They're on. It's on a telephone. A I know. Yeah. Telephone. yeah. It's a pound sign. Oh, that's a pound sign. That's I the thought it was pound like a sign. It's yeah. like hashtag two o five. No. If you call anywhere in the army, you have to press the pound sign after. Yeah. So <clears> my. <throat> My second iteration of signs, I started doing small signs because they were easier to hold because I had the big signs like the bounce them if you got them, but it was covering up everybody's space behind me because I'm telling you, man, back in the day, you know, races were so, uh, so grassroots that we didn't know any better. Dude, we would be at the tape on the side of the hill lined all the way up the hill. Yep. And that that's where the fans sat. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, looking down the hill, like like is he coming? And yeah. then as soon as you're doing this, and as soon as you look down, here he, yeah, you're like mouth full of bogger, yeah, and you're cut boggers at that Tennessee cut boggers, yeah, and so we had to stop that. But the one thing was, I had those huge signs like that. <laughs> I had, I had to start going to the small signs, and then. You know, because I used to have a bogger sign on that, yeah. and then I would say, "Them ain't for the for the razor guys." Right. Them ain't because <laughs> they would go and they would they would go and have some kind of some Chinese knockoff, like them ain't bighorns. So you gotta, and, and then I would also have to tell them to air down. Yes, you gotta air the big if you got big horns. I don't know, and there I'm gonna I'll argue with anybody about tire pressure, but I think you know that. I know some people have a shirt, air down for what, but I mean, I don't know. Tell if if you're in the uh, if you're in, if you're uh, in the comments, tell us what you air down to. Yeah, William Wallace just just built a, a pretty bad little razor. What do you? Uh, oh yeah. What are you airing down to, William? What's he air down his crawler? Yeah. William said he's seen this guy in videos, and you know what I say? Yes. Well, as a uh, as seen on YouTube. Yep, I saw that one today. As seen on YouTube. Yep. That's um. Ain't that I the mean, truth though? So let... I'm saying you got to. I had a, I, I had a buddy about 15 years ago, and I ain't gonna say Matt Myrick's name, but but he would be like, man, I ain't gonna film you. You ain't doing nothing special. I'm like, dude, I'm going up Gauntlet at Morris Mountain. Man, I'm slinging dirt. He goes, man, don't nobody want to see that on YouTube. And I'm like, you're right. You're right, actually. I don't nobody <laughs> want. But I mean, I, I might as well have just been in an expedition. You know, I might as well just been crossing the Sahara, because that little that little bitty uh, six cylinder Toyota was just a you know pew 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 pew. pew no woo pal. So he was right. But so that's what that sign that's what that sign uh, as seen on YouTube is because. Yeah. If you saw it on YouTube, then you know it's real, and you know it's somebody. So, so what was that like then? As as you know, you're you're spending all this time and all these parks and stuff. You're a regular there for the most part. You know now you see these bouncers. You see Cole out there or Matt for that matter. Yeah. And, and and now you're seeing your local favorite parks on YouTube getting tens of thousands of views more hundreds of thousands yeah oh uh, it's crazy i don't know i mean you got let's not even talk i mean we got newcomers like big hill media who john edwards right there uh uh 
uh, Sicky Bearcat. He goes by Sicky Bearcat, so um, he's, he's kind of a big deal. They've been on the show too. Both of them at the same time. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. don't let them. Oh, Bear, don't let him come. Bear, time. Bearcat was sucking down the Jaeger bombs, man, like uh, like a well, tank. Actually, you're right. That's why they need to come on at the same time yeah. because one, while one of them is actually kind of coming back to coherency, yeah. uh, <laughs> they, they, have, they may be so imbibed that you got to have one talking while the other one doing Jaeger bombs or whatever it is they're doing. Man, I love them guys, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I they. No, no, you didn't interrupt at all. I'm probably interrupting you. I just think that, they, yeah, they're going to, yeah. They need to live up their 20s because it don't look like they're going to uh, see their 30s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so enjoy your 20s, boys. Enjoy them. They're great. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they, I, I, I love hanging out with those guys. Yeah. I act, so speaking of Big Hill Media, last year at the Expo at Tennessee, I used to have some shirts. Um one of my shirts said, on the front it said, I'm not a crawler. And on the back it said, I just bounce a lot. And that's a, that's from an old song, like it's from an old big pun song. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a baller. I just yep. play a lot. Play a lot, like, yeah. Explicit, explicit. I just, you know. Oh, just, yeah. No, th- yeah. Okay, like, okay, okay. It was a rap song. Yeah, I'm not a baller. No, yeah. I, just, I just, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so... I had a shirt, and we sold a few of them um, that said, I'm not a crawler. I just bounce a lot. Well, I roll up to Big Hill Media. Those two cats, guess where I saw them? First of all, they were at the bar. Saw them at the bar. Well, I roll up to them, and he's like, oh, that's a that's a cool shirt. And I'm like, yeah, you get it? And they're like, no. <laughs> and, and then I showed the back, and I'm like, I just bounce a lot, and they're like, uh, okay. okay. And I was like, what the hell are you kidding me? You don't get the reference? I'm not a, I'm not a baller. I just have a lot. I'm like, whoa. So that's when I knew I was old. That's when I knew I was over. That's when I knew I was over the big hill. I, 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 I'm not the big hill. No, man. No. No, it's uh, I don't know. I I mean, you're I'm old, but uh, I act like I'm young. I think uh, a lot of people think I'm a lot younger than I am, but uh, I think it's just I it's attitude. Hey, it's your heart, man. It's your character. That's all right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I'm looking at these bags under my eyes, and I, I guess it's my lighting. Your lighting is beautiful. See, no one, no one has really taught me how to be on camera. Well, it's still, cause it's dark there, right? Is it oh, dark yeah, there? Dark. Oh yeah, no, it's it's still daylight out here, man. I still got like two or three hours of daylight left. Well, you see, I wear my I wear my bill flat. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing that since I was a Boy Scout leader. Um, and uh, you see, you've got a curb bill. I see it. Yep. But I wear my bill flat, and I normally wear it about this level, but. I want people to see my eyes, so I had to kick this up like, yeah, like you know, like hey. a graduation hat. Hey, I think you look like a million bucks, man. Well, at least a few, a few, a, a few doll hairs, like one or two doll hairs, is about <laughs> what I'm worth right now. Uh, and we say that that's that's another saying that we say in in, in the deep south is dollars or doll hairs. Yep. Horse pressures. Uh, horse pressures. Uh, I mean, back way back in the day on Hardline uh, Forum, people used to always yell "Bible bang and holla," um, <laughs> like uh, good hook dirt. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think we talk enough about the Bible bang and holla and the hook dirt these days. We need to. I think we're getting, we're we're moving, we're, we're moving too far away from our roots, but we're gonna we're gonna rein them back in. Yep. Good. Well, you know, I t- I tell you what, I want this to be a platform for that. I'm serious. I don't want to lose those roots because that's where it started. That's where it came yeah. from. I mean, can you, yeah. you know, you know, if, if we look at NASCAR and I know that NASCAR is way ahead of rock, rock bouncing, but you what know, is NASCAR? if we look at NASCAR, oh, uh, yeah. you know, 
Well, you started talking about NASCAR and things started falling. Exactly. See, yeah. so I don't want that to happen. I don't want I don't want rock bouncing to fall like that. Well, you know what I mean. Well, I guess when I get I guess what you're saying is that rock bouncing can never be politically correct. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I. I don't know if we want to go down that rabbit hole, but uh, I, we probably all agree on the same things, which is peace, love, and harmony. And uh, that's what we all want. Yep. Is peace. Yep. And having peace is being left alone. <laughs> that, that's my peace. Yep. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else's. Leave me alone, and you will get the you'll get the happy Eric. Yeah. That's uh, right. Start start trying to impose on me, and you're going to get not so happy, Eric. Yeah. It's, he's not. He's not a fun guy. That, that's but, why. That, that's why I try to make this show a safe place for. You know <laughs> what I mean. Point. We we yeah. can talk rock bouncing all day long, man. I'll sit. In, I'll sit here and talk to you all day long. But when you yeah. start. You start. The, the, you know. I, I I put that uniform on for ten years almost. Uh, went to went to war a couple times. You know and. Uh, I, all I want to do is just enjoy this beautiful country that we we live in now, this free country that we live in, and, uh, you know, I'll start paying attention when my freedoms start getting taken away, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Until then. Exactly. Until then. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you know, another thing, that people hear lately, well, how, how did you go through Corona? Like, what are you, what are you doing through quarantine? And I, I, I'm I, fortunate enough to have a hobby that they will allow you to do, which is mountain biking. And uh, there is there is nothing more social distancing than mountain biking because uh, when you ride as slow as I ride, you're not anywhere, you're not even close to six feet behind somebody. I mean, I'm like six miles behind people who are riding, 600 yards behind people riding up those hills or down the field. Cause I'm not even a fast rider, but I know a lot of people are like, man, you're really getting into that mountain biking. But I'm telling you what, man, I have probably mountain biked my entire life. Um, mountain biking became a thing in the eighties and a buddy of mine actually had a mountain bike then. And I remember borrowing it from him. And then into the early nineties when I was in high school, ooh, uh, that showing my age, I um, I didn't have a car when I turned sixteen. Uh, uh, we uh, we barely even had a phone connected in the house. Uh, so if I needed to get to a friend's house, I had to ride either I had to walk, hitch a ride, or ride a bicycle. So man, I rode bikes all over. Yep. Went to college, didn't have a car when I went to college. Rode a bike. Yep. So. I, I would uh I would borrow my friends nice bikes and uh and go really hardcore mountain biking. So when I got my first good paying job I went and bought me a really nice bike. So man, I've been biking for, for decades, but it's it's a uh it's a hobby uh about like uh rock crawling and rock bouncing is and um some of these people are making it uh rock bouncing a sport and that's what I'm digging and that's what I wanna I kind of, you know, I'll, I, I won't pay a, I'll play a role. I won't, I, uh, some people say I might be playing a character, but I'll play a role in whatever I yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah, a role, a character, yeah. I mean, uh, we all have character, I think, but, uh, but no, absolutely. I, I think, uh, yeah. you know, you, Zach Garner, I mean, y you know, you guys. Who's that? You Who's guys, that? You guys make, you know, this there's a is that, is that the uh is is that the girl on the live feed with with dave <laughs> yes yes where's the uh, where's the bikini yeah. shirt yeah, yeah. she's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yes no yeah. we had we had zach on the show earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago I, I, man yeah. The show. yeah he's uh he was uh, it was a good show man but uh, I think the only thing that would have made that show better is if I could have been at Como Steakhouse eating a steak, watching the show. Yes. Have you have you, have you been to Como? No, but I, I've been invited. So next time I'm in Mississippi, we're gonna go. I don't even. I I, I think you uh because 
I actually made it a point to go there just to eat. Like, I really, I was like, okay, cool. I, I enjoy seeing all y'all, but I just want to eat a steak. And uh, it's a great experience. It's a very good steak. Yeah. Uh, so I want to I wanna eat there uh, it, with Trip once because uh, he buys. I have uh, Trip Pullen. You know him? Oh, yeah. No, I know, I know Trip. I said he buys. You want to eat oh, there because well, he buys. He, he pays. Well, he's also, if you've seen one of his videos, he clearly, he states he's the best one out here. So, I hate talking about a character. Uh, yep. He, he is probably one of the most entertaining and fun people to be around. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love this sport, because yep. of people like him. Uh, and how he can, he can rile some folks up. I oh, love yeah. that. Oh yeah. I love. Oh love yeah. It. No, it was. Uh, I, I hung out with him and John and Bubba out at King of the Hammers. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It was a good time. It was a good I have time. not. I've never been to King of the Hammers. Oh boy, um, we gotta get you out there, man. Well, even I mean, even my from all walks of off road life. Yep. Um, I should... have resisted, I have resisted that itch. So. Um, a lot of people may know that kind of leads into how I live. And if it looks like I'm in an RV, that's because I am, yeah. I am in an RV. Uh, I live in an RV. Um, I currently also own a house that I'm selling literally right now. It's, an, it's, um, I can tell the world now it's under contract. Nice. Congrats. So, Thank you. We'll, we'll we'll hope that it's uh it, it it that process goes through and it goes through. But um, so I've lived in an RV for seven years, and my old job really kind of warranted it. Um, and it kind of circles back to off roading, where uh, I had moved to Birmingham and had an apartment, and I was a field tech in IT, where I was traveling, and on jo some of the jobs I was staying at two to three months in a hotel. Well, so there was a long stint where uh, Monday through Friday was in a hotel where well, they check you out because they expect you to go home. Well, I don't have a wife. I don't have a kid. I, I, I would go to the off road parks. So I would take my, my tent and sleep in the off road park and then go right back to the hotel. So I told my friend who was my boss at the time, I'm like, I'm going to buy an RV. And that way, instead of the company paying for the hotel, you'll just pay for the RV spot. And then on Friday, I'll roll out to the, to the off-road parks because I'm tired of seeing my buddies uh, wake up in their RVs and fix their hot coffee and sit in their recliners and watch TV while I'm crawling out of a tent, cracking open, uh, you know, uh, a, a coke Brush. and and brushing my teeth out of teeth. a out of a two gallon jug. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, is this living? Uh, well, not. I, I I want to I want to sleep in a queen size bed like all my other buddies right beside me. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, I, I want to run a generator all night long like they're running their generator all night long. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's um. Uh, I bought a, a diesel pusher for the same price that most people would buy an F-250. Um, so my my RV is old enough to vote. It, it, it's uh, it, it's going to vote in the 2020 elections. It's a 20-year-old RV. And uh, so we're looking forward to the day that it can uh, drink legally because it drinks illegally now when it's going down the road. It gets like nine miles to the gallon. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so this year it's going to turn 21, and it's going to be able to drink legally going down the road. But uh, I um, my work now is about to let me uh, go 100% remote, and so I am taking this opportunity to go remote. So all my off-road friends and even my mountain bike friends, they're going to start seeing me a whole lot more at these events because I am – as much as I can, I'm going to live on the road. Heck yeah, man. That is awesome. I, um, you know, I, I decided probably about 10 years ago when I started doing this and I've lived in my RV for seven years, 
because of all my health conditions, because of the the amount of times that I've really kind of faced death in the face, it's like I had a friend who has now, unfortunately, he's passed. But one of the things he did was he retired early because he said he never knew when that time would come. And um, that's the thing is you don't really have to quit your job to retire. Um you can live your life like you're retired, uh, and that's what I'm doing. Yep. And you know, people are like, well, do you have a retirement? I'm like, not really. <laughs> I don't really have a retirement, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, reality is is we're all gonna die. Yep. That's the reality. So, yep. so we're up today. So can't take retirement with you. No, you that's, can't. That's right. <clears throat> When you don't have any beneficiaries like me, then uh, it's uh, it's easier to spend all the money that I make. So, yep. uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna, you'll, you'll see me a lot more for sure. Yeah. So speaking of that, what, where we're we gonna see you next? Dirty Turtles coming up. Any chance well, to see you up I, there? I got to finalize the selling of the house okay. first. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything brand? Anything like within the first two months, three months? 2020 we're just let's uh i'm already looking forward to 2021 okay. i don't know if anyone out there is also looking forward to 2021 yeah. uh 2020 uh is hindsight yeah. literally 2020 vision is hindsight yeah. and i'm ready to i'm ready to kick this somebody was talking about 2019 uh and uh then they they had to uh had to do an about face because 2020 uh yeah. Out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna be at Hawk Pride August first or August uh, July thirty first and August first. What is going on? That's a NRRA event. Oh, Southern I event. will be there. Okay. At Hawk Pride, I will be there. Okay, cool. Because uh, I know that's right there. So well, not yeah. Yeah, because I can fit close enough to that. Yeah. Cool. 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 Uh, that's a it's a Southern Rock racing. Yes, sir. Yep. Or is it the NRRA? I don't know. Well, the NRRA, it falls under the NRRA. I, I say the NRRA because, you know. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, not the NRRS. Correct, yeah. no, the National Rock mm-hmm. Racing Association. There's too many acronyms, man. Yeah, I know, too, I know. It's none of their fault. And yeah. I, I think it's even worse. Yeah, yeah, SRRS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we got a busy, uh, busy month. July is going to be busy, boy. We got Dirty Turtle, uh, July seventeenth yeah. and eighteenth, and then the next weekend after that is Pro Rock at J and J, Oklahoma, Mid America, and then we'll be at Hawk Pride the weekend after that. So, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that we did not do when we came on live is what everyone else does, where they're like, like and share, like and share, like and share. That's right. Um, like and share. Because we're not give. What are we giving away? Do we need to give something away? Well, I, um, I, I don't. I don't have anything to give away to, to you. <laughs> I could give away one of my signs. I could give away one of my patches or something. I don't know. Hey, absolutely. But, uh, uh, I think actually I did do that once at an event. We uh, we gave away a sign, and uh, a kid won it, and it was pretty impressive. I love actually in- interacting with. Cause I'm the biggest fan. So if you come to an event and say, I'm a, I'm the biggest fan. I'm rock bouncer's biggest fans. Like, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> this guy right here is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's how everybody should be. And I think that the kids, um, you know, watching the drivers and just watching all of us organizers and just personalities of the sport interact with the kids is, uh, the future. Yep. Absolutely. Um, We've got some of these kids actually showing out racing, uh, you know, cash. Yeah. Um, Steven Rogers. Steven Rogers. Do we used to have girls? Uh, so talk about back in the day racing. Uh, man, we actually had like teenage girls driving back in the day. It was uh, impressive to see a girl who didn't even yet have her driver's license just killing heels. Yep. It fearless. was uh, a fearless, <laughs> yeah. uh, and just it was it, it probably started out as like uh, 
this is uh, it, my buggy being their dad. Their dad's like, come along, and they just grab it too and yep. jump in it yep. and actually start doing better than their dads, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Yep. So, yep. Um, man, back in the day. Yep. All good. The present just is good, man. And back in the day wasn't that back in the day it really wasn't that far that long ago I, you know i like I, I you know and i'm probably um the biggest critic of that because people always talk about uh the good old days yeah i'm like oh those were the good old days i'm like uh five years ago was the good old days <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah man yeah but some of them are some of those guys some of my friends were actually in high school back then and see, I had already graduated from college back then, so I was already in, you know, in my professional career. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, push the broom. Yeah. Once I graduated from college, I, I I kept pushing the broom. I moved up to fries with once I got my degree. Yeah. So <laughs> I was picking out trash, and then I moved to fries. So uh, hopefully, um, hopefully they'll put me on the register. Um, they probably won't put me on the register until uh, fast food start making fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> right. Yes. But once yes. Well, once that happens, they'll put me on the register because uh, I don't know. Maybe my personality. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> and and if I will I will be the first to tell you if uh, if McDonald's starts paying fifteen dollars an hour. I'll be there. You'll be there. <laughs> I, I will work the day shift or the night shift, but trust me, I will. May I take your order? And I will say it with a happy face and be my pleasure. Yep. I, you know, Chick-fil-A won't be the only place that says my pleasure. Yep. I'll, I'll be saying it at Popeye's or McDonald's or whoever hires me to work the register for $15 an hour. Yep. I'll be there. Yep. That's I'll right. be there. You know, I, I tell you, I, I've done a lot of, stuff like i said i've been management and i've been to war i've been you know all this stuff and it, it it really being happy getting up and going to work every day and wanting to do it is, yeah. is all that matters you can fight and work your work your tail off and be in a job that you are absolutely miserable at and that oh, ain't yeah. worth it man that ain't no. worth it it ain't worth it be happy be happy I think the one thing that gets me through life and it kind of spills over to work is surround yourself with happy people and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I tell people all the time, like, you know what? I, I could literally be shoveling crap. And if I'm with people who I enjoy being around, yep. I'm going to make that situation great. Yep. Sure. And I mean, and I was out, we were out digging trails today, which was, I mean, in 90 degree weather, it was 95. At, if the sun's beating directly alone, it's 95. Yep. And I was yelling and whistling and they kept looking at me like, what? Shut up. Yeah. God. What? But I was just happy because I was with like four or five folks, girls and boys out there. Yep. And we, we were enjoying it. We were just having a good time. And it really, and we were literally shoveling dirt. And having a good time. Yep. So you surround yourself. And that's the same way with this rock bouncing community, man. This race family that we have, yep. we're just fun to be around. That's and right. and your your blood family is like, why do you never come see us? I'm like, well, because <laughs> I was born into this family, but I, these are the people I choose to be around on the weekends. And that's right. I, I will take my vacation to go hang out with them because they're fun to be around. Hey, I started dragging my blood family. To rock bouncing I, races. I wouldn't do that. I, I would not put my rock bouncing family through that misery. <laughs> well, I, I got a good, I got a great relationship with my, my dad, my family. And, oh, that's awesome. You know what I mean? We're, we're all gearheads yeah. and stuff. So, you know, yeah. you should have seen him at finals, man. He's standing there at the edge of the hill when Gold Rush goes by and he had his ear, ear pro on and everything. And, oh, he was having a good time. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Got them the That's VIP. All. Got them VIP seats right up front. So, yep. I probably have talked enough about me. So, uh, no, dude, this is your show, man. This is absolutely, uh, you know. 
Is... We should have. Uh, maybe maybe next time I'll come on and we'll actually be like co-hosts talking about something that we're looking at or something like I, that. I so. think we should do a road trip show. Uh, well, I one of the things that me being on the road and being able to work remote now that my company has decided that, hey, we we were forced to work remote because of COVID coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, but now they're they're accepting the fact that a lot of roles in our company can actually work remote, um, and we excel at it. Like I, um, I'm I'm game for doing some cool stuff. Yep. For for the uh, off-road uh, racing scene and the community all together. Um, I am probably going to be spending a lot of time out in Utah. Um, cool. I've got a lot of friends there. Uh, I actually have, you know, primarily off-road friends are out there in Utah. Um, and they're either forum owners or former forum owners or former uh uh, IT company owners, they're all out there loving Utah and digging the trails. And a lot of them have mountain bikes. A lot of them have rock crawlers. Some of them even have bouncers out there. Um, that's kind of where I just want to go. I just enjoy yeah. what God gave us this, this nice sand pit to play in. Yeah, that's right. Um, love it. That's so right. I, I'm going to go out there and spend some time for sure. But all the parts in between here and there, I'm also going to spend time. Arkansas, Good. Missouri, yep. Texas. Good. Well, we'll do a show I'll, Do a show right there in your living room. Yeah. Uh, like Zach Galifianakis has uh, Between Two Ferns. Yeah. We could do a show. We could actually we, we could bring um, one of these racers in and sit them on the couch yep. and have a show called uh, Between Two Boggers. <laughs> yeah, Sarah Sorensen <laughs> says, "Do you like Beavis and Butthead, where you watch rock bouncing videos and comment?" <laughs> yeah, Man, Sarah, I can't see the comments right now. That's the unfortunate part about I, I don't know. I, I'm in IT, but I don't know how to work any of this. That's why. I, that's why I asked Nick. I was like, "What do I do with my eyes? I don't even know where to look. Like I'm looking <laughs> all around like this and." My hands, I, I don't know what to you've do been, with them. You've been doing well. You've been doing well. All right. Well, hey, man, we've been uh, been going for almost an hour and a half now. Doesn't doesn't feel Woo! like it. But uh, is there anything else that, uh, what did we miss? I mean, I'm sure we could do a two or three part series. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you would probably need to do the cliff notes and you would probably get better viewership. But uh <laughs> we'll cut out all the menial bull crap. But uh, yeah. Is there anybody For else sure. watching that wants to show Eric any love? I know everybody's. Been... I don't even know. I don't, I, I don't even know how to see the the. Well, the, uh... I've I've picked out the you know some of the more relevant uh, comments. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it, it's so much, and I and I I don't like to take away from my guest either. You know, I'm here to to hang out, shoot the breeze with you, and. If I'm constantly on my phone, you know, I don't, I don't like to do that. Yeah. Uh, has, Kenneth wants us to want you to come back on when we watch videos. Occasionally, if I don't have a guest, uh, Charles lets us watch some of his footage and we get to uh, we get to uh, watch some rock bouncer videos. So. Yeah, that would be a fun. That's kind of fun. And, I've you know, I've, I've told a few people that that's the way this little online experience needs to go. Yep. Um, people, people really, uh, we're ugly. I mean, I, I, you're not ugly. I am. They don't want to look at this. They don't look at all this. They don't want to look at all my, you know, stuff right here. Foam finger in the back or, you know, they don't want to look at my homemade, uh, sticky shirt. They don't want that. that they don't want to see this. What they want to do back to, the old days on the forums, they want to see that Bible bang and holla. They want to see that hook dirt spinning. That's right. That's what they want to watch. That's right. So if we could show them that, like while we're talking, because we're really just here to hear ourselves talk. Talk, yeah, for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, man. And, and, and hey, 
I am all for that, dude. You have no idea that would make me so happy. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. Somehow, some way, we got to get it going on. I don't know how. I don't know how all that goes, but um, uh, I don't know who all is watching. Who's gonna watch this later on? Uh, if we if we put it on a uh, like a like a a, a wall uh, in a cave, that way. People in three thousand years can watch this. Yep. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how history works, or how it repeats itself. We're uh, the rate that we're getting rid of history in our society. I don't know if we're going to be able to put this on the wall in a cave and people will watch it. They'll probably pull it down because they're, you know, yeah. this yeah. right here. They don't like the way this looks. Yeah. So. Right. So. Well. Man, thanks for having me on. I truly appreciate hey, it. Hey, I appreciate you making, because uh, I, I know it was kind of short notice, but uh, wow. I, I definitely appreciate it, man. And I can't wait to see you. Hawk Pride for sure. So I'll see you next month. Absolutely. The next and month. Ma I, and maybe by that time I'm already living in my house and have my house at Hawk Pride. I hope so. so. I'll, I'll be sending prayers that way, brother, for sure. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. All thanks right. for having me on. So, uh, cut me off while I'm talking. I'll, I'll I'll hang up on you. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. You ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I will. See you, man. Whew. Man, I, I love having uh, guests that everybody just... I, I for all y'all watching right now, I want y'all to meet Eric in person. Eric is he's just amazing. He's just an amazing person and uh, you know y'all got to experience him tonight and I'm thankful for that. Uh, I will have him on whenever he can as much as possible because he's great for the sport. But if I could recommend anything, I'd have y'all meet him in, in person. Because uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you know, he, he's just salt of the earth, man. He's just a great guy. And now, you know, now y'all know that we, you know, we kind of heard a little bit of his story. And uh, to me, it's important that these characters. And I'm not saying, you know. I say character not in a sense like he's fake at all, because he's not. But he has amazing character. He is a character. And uh, I really wish for all y'all out there who are fans of Rock Bouncing that you get to meet Eric Hagen one day. For sure. But, alright everybody. Uh, man, I'm sorry I have not done well at keeping up on comments today. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Um, Miss McIntyre, Eric is the bomb. I know it. I know it. Dylan Patton, that angle looks good on you. <laughs> Jesse's cool show, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, let's see. We got plan for so tomorrow. Um, if if y'all were paying attention, we were supposed to have Shane on today. They had some weather uh, up in Shane's neck of the woods up there in Missouri. I'm talking about Shane Christensen uh, from Gold Rush. Um, so he had to postpone, but we're going to have him on tomorrow. We're going to have a little update from the Outlaw race where Shane placed second. And uh, I just, um, I'm super excited to hear, you know, Shane's always making changes, always doing what he can to to make uh, Gold Rush a better bouncer, and it's showing it's now paying off. So uh, excited to hear from Shane. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to have Mr. Jesse Letgrate on the show with us. Uh, Jesse is building some pretty... Um, he, he's doing a lot of amazing things fabrication-wise, building chassis and stuff like that. So... Uh, Jesse's it, it's gonna be important uh, it's gonna be a really good episode so 
Uh, and then Thursday, uh, I'm planning on having Daniel on. Daniel from Heckley Racing. Um, they are this close to having smoked out back running again. So uh, that may get canceled or rescheduled. Not canceled, rescheduled. But uh, I, I want Daniel to feel comfortable. I want Daniel to... Uh, to to be ready to go so um you know looking forward to hearing from heckley racing for sure aubrey candle uh audrey candle campbell my goodness watching with us thank you for joining us uh miss mary bynum watching thank you ma'am she enjoyed the show today i love y'all i can't wait uh can't wait to get back on the hill, man. But before then, we'll join back here. Same bad time, same bad channel. I look forward to it. See you, everybody.